Hello and welcome to Wisdom from the Word. I'm Pastor Gray. In this short message, I'm going to talk about a couple of investments that will produce dividends far greater than gold and silver. The demand for these commodities is at an all-time high. In fact, my wife and I have been investing in them for quite some time now and they have never gone down. Our lives have truly been enriched by them. We also taught our children the value of investing starting at an early age. What's fascinating about these two investments is the fact that you can invest a little or a lot. It just depends upon you. But once you begin, I think you will agree it's the best investments there is. In fact, there are many people in the Bible who have reaped great rewards for investing in these commodities. Let me read a short list of people from the Bible, Bible characters who invested. First, let's start in the Old Testament. We have Moses, Aaron, Joshua, Daniel, and David. All of those men invested in these commodities I'm going to tell you about. Then we turn over to the New Testament and we find Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We find the Apostle Paul, Peter, Stephen, and even Jesus invested in them. But I want to focus on one person in the Old Testament who not only invested in these two things, but also spoke about the importance of these investments. His name is Solomon, king over the Israelites. Now up front, Solomon was one of Israel's wicked kings and a great sinner. But on the other hand, the Lord still used him for his glory. Solomon had enough wits about himself to understand the importance of making wise choices when it came to investing, for he was an extremely wealthy person. Listen as he talks about these important investments. In the Bible, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 16, Solomon tells us this, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. So you see from this verse, the two things that Solomon tells us to invest in is number one, wisdom, and number two, knowledge. Does that surprise you? How can wisdom and knowledge be worth more than silver or gold? Now don't you go away, stay with me and I'll explain. You see, we live in a world that has developed and established the philosophy that we've got to keep up with the Joneses. You've probably heard that phrase many times in your life. This idiom is defined as trying to own all the same things as people you know in order to seem as good as they are. Now, when you really stop and mull that over in your mind, don't it sound ridiculous? For one to spend their hard-earned money just to earn the right to say, I have more and better stuff than so-and-so? Isn't that on the loony side, don't you think? Be that as it is, King Solomon in the Bible was the richest king of his era. He said it was far better to pursue wisdom and to pursue understanding than placing one's trust in gold or in silver or in the riches of this world in general. The riches of the world are uncertain at best and will certainly be left behind when we exit this world. 
But friends, wisdom and understanding has eternal benefits, eternal rewards now and in the life to come. You see, earthly treasures are corruptible. They are here one moment and gone the next. But the wisdom and the knowledge of God will remain forever. Granted, treasures of this earth may make you happy for a brief time, but they will eventually be spent, lost, or even stolen. On the other hand, godly wisdom and knowledge will remain locked up in our eternal souls now and forevermore. That's a place that no thief can break in and steal, not even the devil himself. Now please don't misunderstand Solomon in this passage that we quoted above. To have and to acquire possessions is not a sin in and of itself. But when we allow them to supersede the quest of divine knowledge and wisdom, it becomes a hindrance, a heavy weight dragging us down and impeding our spiritual growth. When we fix our eyes on material possessions of this material world, we take our eyes off of God. When we take our eyes off of God, we begin to lose our way. And before long, we find ourselves wandering in loneliness and despair. Because gold and silver can never bring happiness for long and certainly it will not bring true joy in a person's life. Anything of this world, my friends, leads to emptiness. It leads to sorrow. It leads to pain. It will never, never satisfy nor fill that black hole in your heart. It has been countlessly tried and proven and has always failed. So we must ask ourselves the question, where does true wisdom and knowledge come from? Well, you asked for it, so here's the answer. The very foundation of godly wisdom and knowledge sprang from Jesus Christ himself. He is the only source from which flows wisdom, knowledge, and strength for our every daily life. If you have the wisdom and knowledge of Christ, you are a rich person, my friend. The reason the world is so messed up today is because they have rejected Jesus Christ and have pushed him out of every institution, beginning with our homes, our schools, our government, and even our churches. Many claim to have wisdom outside of Jesus, but the Bible calls them fools. Sadly, the precious name of Jesus has become a curse word, a word of reproach, rebuke, and offense in the world's standards. God's holy name carries no honor or respect anymore. Even so-called church people blurt out His name in mockery and disdain and use it as a byword. Wisdom, on the other hand, leads to a personal relationship with God. Wisdom for the problems we encounter each day. Wisdom enabling us the ability to help others in need. And wisdom and knowledge to know and understand the riches of the Word of God and how to apply God's instructions to our lives. A person that is seeking for godly wisdom and knowledge from a holy God is indeed a blessed person.
Let me repeat that for you. A person seeking for godly wisdom and godly knowledge from a holy God is indeed a blessed person. There is no curse and condemnation on their lives. They are blessed with peace and joy that passes all understanding in Christ Jesus our Lord. And friends, you can have all the wealth of wisdom and knowledge beginning and forming a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now don't leave, I'm almost through. Please stay. Would you do that for me? Please listen on how you can invest in Jesus. Number one, believe that you are a sinner. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 21 it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two, believe that Jesus Christ paid for your sins on the cross by shedding His blood. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 3, it says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Then over in Colossians chapter 12 and verse 14, the Bible says, and took, that is, He, Jesus, took it, our sins, out of the way, nailing them to His cross. And number three, believe that Jesus was buried and on the third day arose from the grave. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 4, it says, Jesus was buried and that He arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now friend, if you truly believe these things deep down in your heart, God says that you have been saved and will one day be with Him in heaven. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call from the heart or verbally with your mouth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But remember, no amount of good works will ever save your soul. No matter how hard you try or how good you are or how much money you give to people or how good you are to others, it's only by the grace of God, through faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we are saved. Plus nothing, minus nothing. For more information about how to be saved, I've put a link in the info section below. Please go there, click on it, and read what it says about being saved. Would you do that? Dear Lord, please continually remind us that true riches emanate from you. As humans, we tend to forget that you should be our ultimate objective, to know you and to know your wisdom and to know your knowledge to seek after godly instruction and understanding. You said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now before you go, please like, subscribe, and click the solid bell notification for Jesus. Would you do that for me? So until next video, this is Pastor Greg saying, Keep your eyes to the skies, for your redemption draws nigh.